How is it going, YouTube friends? Thought of the day number 11. Today we're going to talk about how weightlifting, if you practice the sport or the discipline, can help your rowing technique. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to compete in both sports, um, by no means at a high level, but still competed in both sports for a certain period of time. And I find myself now working with uh, quite a few CrossFitters around conditioning specifically. And as part of this is, you know, using, knowing how to use the concept to rower appropriately, uh, skier goes well. And I, we could, I could do another video on this. If you're interested, leave me a comment below. But for the rower specifically, I think that it's still quite of a misunderstood piece of equipment when it comes to technique. I think, don't get me wrong, I think most CrossFitters, especially the high-level ones, have a good rowing technique. But I, I, you rarely see someone with great technique, and that's not, I'm not saying that from a judgment standpoint, but all you have to do is look at what a, an Olympic rower looks like on a Concept 2, and then what a CrossFitter looks like on a Concept 2 rower, to see that there's some differences there. And obviously, CrossFitters are usually not two meters plus like the rowers are, so it's not going to be all the same. However, there are still some fundamental technical considerations uh, or features that we should look for when using a rower. And a lot of those, a lot of those, uh, we can draw par parallels from Olympic weightlifting. So for those who practice weightlifting, um, you already have a leg up, so to speak, on those who don't when it comes to getting be better at rowing. All you have to do now is transfer kind of the ideas from weightlifting onto the rower. So the biggest, the biggest mistakes that I see on the rower made by most people who row is, first of all, well, I guess the two big things, because they're really, there's really two of them. And it's funny because you'll see the same mistakes in, in people who begin doing weightlifting uh, or practice weightlifting is an early arm pull. And we're not talking about the early arm bend in weightlifting, just an early arm pull, okay? And an early opening of the hips. Those are the, bar none, the two biggest mistakes that you see. And this is where you're leaking 10, 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 watts of power uh, simply because your movement isn't efficient and isn't timed properly, isn't coordinated properly, and isn't executed in the best way possible. So what you want to do, just like in the first pull, in, uh, in like a, let's take a snatch as, a, as the reference point here because uh, it's the, a continuous pull. Nah, maybe a clean. I don't know. I like the snatch just because of the, the torso position that it forces you to be in. So let's take a snatch. First pull on the snatch, what's the goal? The goal is to get to the knee. The goal is to get to the knee without losing trunk position. So you can then leverage your posterior chain, the power through the hips, and then accelerate that bar up. It's the same thing on the rower. The, but the, the difference being is that it's not actually a pull, it's a push. So you have to keep your arms straight. You have to keep your arms straight. You have to not pull with your arms and you have to drive with your legs. Think of driving the machine away. Drive the machine away and keep your torso forward. So if you take a video from the side, your shoulders should stay in front of your hips, right? Until at least three quarters through the leg drive. Then you drive and open the hips and you finish with the arms. A good way to figure out if you're doing this right is if your arms are hurting more than your legs at any point when you're rowing, you're using too much arms. Your legs shouldn't be on fire, your arms should be okay. All right, if it's not the case, you need to push harder through the legs, squeeze the core, keep the core tight, drive through the legs, open powerfully through the hips, and then finish with the arms. It's the same as a weightlifting pull. You're patient on the first pull. You don't want to lift your shoulders too early. You don't want to lose position with the trunk. 
And then you want to leverage the hips. You don't want to pull with your arms. You want to use all the power through the, through the midline. And then you want to finish fast with the arms. And that's something you can actually look at, which is phenomenal with the concept too, and which I detail in my free course, which is only in French right now. So maybe if you're interested in having that free course in English, leave me a comment below. Um, let's, play, let's play it like that. If I get 10 comments below this video uh, that request the Ergmaster course in English, I will make the, uh, the Ergmaster course in English. Okay, it's just a little hurdle for me to just redo all the videos in, in English, uh, but I'll gladly do it if there's enough people interested. So if you're interested, leave me a comment. And if you're very, very interested, just get five or six of your friends to leave comments under the video. And when I get to 10 comments, I will make the course in English. Uh, essentially, I made a little online course, free course in French, where I detail how to use the whole Concept2 ecosystem, the online log, the training log that is free, the app that is free, the PM5, so the performance monitor on the devices, um, how to use the rower, how to use the ski, how to use the bike erg, how to, how to apply the right settings, how to correct your technique on it. Um, so that's a little free course, but it's in French. And so one of the things you'll learn in this course is that through the Concept2 app, which is called Erg Data, you can sync it to the PM5, to the performance monitor, and it will give you additional metrics that you don't see on the monitor itself. Namely, drive length and drive speed. Drive speed is, in my, important, in my estimation, one of the most important metrics that you can look at if you want to improve your rowing technique. And if you were to segment, just like I teach in the course, if you, if you were to segment your, 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 your stroke, your rowing stroke, into a legs only first, and then a legs and hips second, and then a full stroke last, what you would want to see is an increase in speed, in the drive speed, in each of those segments, right? You don't want to have a one speed kind of drive. You drive with the legs, obviously it's the heaviest part, and then you want to accelerate through the hips and finally accelerate even more through the finish with the arms, just like you would do in a weightlifting pull. And I find that this, the app is a fantastic tool to help you visualize it and get the direct feedback on each stroke of what you're doing right and what you could improve. So I think that's a great way that it's, it's essentially as if you had a motion capture system built into your phone when looking at your weightlifting, giving you instant speed, like bar speed across a lift in real time that you can see while you're doing it. That's phenomenal, honestly. Um, now that I'm talking about it, I realize how, how freaking good it is. Uh, and I'm, I'm amazed that nobody knows about it or, or, or uses it. Uh, so again, if you want more details on all this, leave me a comment below about the Ergmaster online course, free course, and I will translate it into English. Um, but here you have it. You have the most important parts of, uh, you know, leveraging your weightlifting knowledge or skill onto the rower onto the concept to rower so that you can improve your technique. So don't pull early with the arms. Don't open early with the hips, drive with the legs first, keep your core tight, open with the hips second, and then finish with the arms. Be patient on that drive. You want to think about pushing the machine away, not leaning back, not pulling. We're pushing and then we finish. And that's going to help you a lot. Um, it usually takes, if you've been rowing quite a bit, I'd say two to three weeks. If you work on it daily, in two to three weeks, you can really make a big difference in your technique on the rower if you apply yourself to it and apply those, those minute changes and really treat it as a skill and not just as a conditioning, just go and, and, and pull hard. Um, it's a skill. And if you improve your skill of rowing, you will get some free real estate. You will get some free watts, some free meters, some free calories, simply because you're more efficient and you don't leak as much power left, right, and center. So here you have it. If you like those videos, leave me a comment, leave me a like, subscribe to the channel because it's free and you can always change your mind uh, on that. I hope I'll see you tomorrow for the next thought of the day in English. If you have any topic requests, leave me a comment below. And uh, like I said, I'll see you in the next video.
Take care, friends.